Christmas are nearing, and the road to London 2012 continues as the United States women's national soccer team take on fellow Olympic gold medal hopefuls and reigning World Cup champions Japan. Olympic preparations resume here on Universal Sports. So glad you're along with us. Alongside two-time USA Olympic soccer gold medalist Brandi Chastain. My name is Christian Miles. This is the second of three friendlies leading up to the Summer Olympic Games and a lot at stake. Before we get into things, let's take a look at the starting lineups. We begin with Japan, and they return seven of the 11 starters that won the Women's World Cup back in July of 2011 in Germany. It's going to be Nagasoto and Kawasumi and Kaiori, who was immense in Germany will start in goal. Likewise, the same scenario here for the United States, Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan leading the line, both of whom were on target in Saturday's big 3-1 victory over Sweden, and of course, both scoring in that 2-2 draw in the Women's World Cup final. They will be integral. The two changes, of course, seeing Amy LePelbit come over on the right-hand side. We'll see Kelly O'Hara come back from a quad strain, and Tobin Heath will get the start on the left-hand side. Well, Brandy, today after that big victory against Sweden, it presents an entirely different kind of test for the U.S. women. A absolutely, but let's first just talk about the USA-Sweden game. U.S. wasn't that steady, but they did get three goals, which you're always hoping for goals. Abby's goal was fantastic strike on the half volley. But I think the back line in that game was not as together and cohesive as they could have been. They're going to need that against Japan today if they're not going to allow balls going through the middle and going one-on-one -on -one with Hope Solo. Two changes as O'Hara comes in as well as Tobin Heath. What do you make of the tweaks here from Pia Sundhaga? Well, you know, speaking with uh, media relations, Aaron Heifetz, he's talking about Pia Sundhaga's doling out minutes, getting some experience for some players because in a big tournament, you're going to need everybody to feel comfortable once they get on the field. You, you don't want it to be your first time coming into a game in a big situation in the Olympics. All right, the United States and Japan renewing their old rivalry. In fact, the third time they've met in the space of three and a half months. On April Fool's Day, it was the United States 1-1 against the Japanese, that at the Kirin Cup in Sendai. And that came just a month after the United States came up short in the Algarve Cup back on March 5th. And the only goal scorer on that day, Megumi Takashi, giving them the 1-0 victory. The man in charge, of course, for Japan is Norio Sasaki, the 54-year-old, now in his fifth year as head coach. The United States in the blue and white, they will be attacking from left to right, and the Japanese in their road away strip. Glad you're along with us as our coverage continues from Halmstad, Sweden, and a good one at that. A very difficult opponent here in the United States with that impressive result. That didn't really tell the whole story. They'll be looking for improvement. What areas will they be focusing on here, Brandy? More possession of the ball, more possession of the ball in the attacking half of the field. Two, a defensive back line that is a little bit more tightened up, especially those two center backs. But I think also the outside wing backs need to get into the attack because that forces the Japanese players to stay in their own half as opposed to do what they do, which is have combination play in the attacking third. The United States with their second game in the space. Of three days, but the Japanese a little bit rusty right now. They haven't played since May 4th in that big 4-1 victory over Brazil. And the referee's whistle offside as the flag goes up by the referee's assistant. And we saw a little bit of that on Saturday, Brandy. Well, I always love for the forwards as a you know previous forward in my other life. Uh, you have to push that back line. You have to make them keep them honest. It's a cat and mouse game with the forwards in the back line. So I, I don't mind if, if the fours are called offside a little bit, it, as long as it's not a lazy offside. Alex Morgan and Pacey Youngster on target on Saturday. And this one comes out wide. It'll come out for a United States throw in here. All eyes on Tobin Heath today. She scored the third and final goal for the U.S. against the Swedes. And coming in the second half. Heather O'Reilly dropping to the bench today for the United States women. And it's Heath. He gets a touch to it. This one poked out and lobbed over, but not the best of crosses, but a chance for the United States to really find that sharpness. How do you evaluate that sharpness here with London just about a month or so away? Well, I think you evaluate it by the type of movement on and off the ball, uh, how easily they give the, the ball away without pressure. I think we saw a little bit too much of that in the game against Sweden. Japan is a team that's very technically savvy. They don't, they don't really get rattled under pressure, even when there is pressure. So I already like that win right there by Rachel Bueller, 
in the midfield. She's not dropping off. She's not allowing Japan to win the ball. So that right there is a sign to me that the U.S. is more intent on winning the ball in the midfield. Real distinct contrast in styles and approaches to the game today. Japan predicated on possession. The United States really has that direct physical style and not the best of clearances. However, they're bailed out here. A mistake. It was offside against Yuki Nagasoto. Uh, I'm not so sure how can this be offside since Rachel Bueller played that ball, but sometimes even the referees get it wrong. Took a deflection off the Japanese attacker, but had to take the good with the bad. Heath plays it into position here. It's a good looking stuff here in the United States with a brilliant wow. start. Absolutely stunning stuff. And Alex Morgan, she's done it again. She cannot stop scoring goals. Her 16th of 2012. 1 0 to the U.S. Well, this is exactly how the U.S. wants to start. The first five minutes of any game, albeit a big one, a friendly, whatever, are the most critical. Can you put your opponent under pressure? And here, Alex Morgan gets in behind this left, uh, the right center back, and she does what she does well. She gets her eyes on the ball. She knows where the goalkeeper is, and she smashes this ball beyond Kaiori into the far corner. Uh, I, what I love about this, and we talked about this before this game even started, Alex Morgan has two feet on her. Mm -hmm. You know, right, left, it doesn't matter. She hits the ball very technically well, and it results in a great goal. And for the sec second consecutive game, Alex Morgan scoring against the Japanese. She's been a thorn in their side, and she is on a great clip right now. Only Mia Hamm in 1997 has a better scoring record at this stage Mia, of course, scoring 18 times in 16 games 15 years ago. But Alex quickly approaching that. You know what else I love about Alex that maybe people don't talk about? She's very, she's an intelligent girl. She's got, she's a graduate from Cal Berkeley. But she plays soccer in a way where she doesn't overthink it. She, you don't see her out there trying to do things. She naturally and instinctively does things. And I think that's what frees her up to score so many goals. She's just... I'm going to go to goal, I'm going to make it happen, and if I don't make it happen this time, I'll make it happen next time. And, and it's a great trait. And she is really making it happen right now. Her fourth goal in the last three games, exactly what a head coach slash manager wants to see ahead of such a big tournament with your strikers on form. Really, there's no question about that partnership up top. No, there's absolutely none. And, and I would be surprised if it doesn't stay like that for... I wish years to come for Abby Wambach, but, you know, within this next year and through the, the Olympic Games, for sure. So, Kaiori beaten. The Japanese, how will they react? Of course, they're getting set for the Summer Games as well. In that group against Canada, Sweden, and South Africa. Rapino takes over for the U.S. It's a bright start for the Americans, looking very sharp. Tobin Heath especially so, making the most of her starting opportunity. It'll come out here for La Pelbit. Tobin Heath actually has great technical ability and maybe perhaps as technical as the greatest Homari Sawa on this field. And, uh, you know, I think that's a good change for the U.S. Get a player who can make combination play, who can run on and off the ball, recognizing the ebb and flow of how the you know, pressure um, influences the game. And I, I like her as a player. We'll see how she fits in in, in this circumstance in this game. The United States trying to match that much heralded technique of the Japanese women as their program has really gone under a heavy renaissance. 29th meeting between these two and the U.S. have really had their number 22 victories in that. However, Brandy, winless in their last three occasions. Yeah, you, you know, you have to kind of look at what have you done for me lately. Comes up and over the top once again. The United States able to get in behind. It looks as though they may have an advantage in the pace department. Well, I don't think that's ever been a question. Japan was just so organized in the last uh, the World Cup. They, were, they had fate on their side, I believe, as well. And the U.S. probably wasn't playing its best. The, they, the U.S. can get behind Japan with balls that do um, go over the top. But can they also possess it in front of them? I think that's the biggest challenge. Quick free kick taken here. The Japanese looking for a good response. It's the right back, Kinga, testing the likes of Kelly O'Hara coming back after missing out against the Swedes. That will push Amy LaPelbit to the right back, and Mitz will drop out. Heath with a lot of touches early on. Laura Cheney playing it for Rapino. We'll see, of course, Rapino and Heath swap sides throughout the match. I like 
that too because it it doesn't get it, things don't stay static and i love the fact that the players are given the freedom to move about right left kind of be in the middle at times i think that bodes well for the u.s it's the back line that needs to be wary if that's happening if there's a transition situation and pia sundhaga after the swede match said she was happy with some things and well, she was nearly happy with that. A gift here. The <laughs> Japanese a little bit rattled here, showing a lot of rust. Remember, they haven't played for over a month and a half. Well, also, I think if you look at it, the U.S. is putting a, what doesn't look like pressure, but as soon as it, the ball gets injected towards that midfield, look at them go already. They've got three players high. They're pressing the goalkeeper for the ball. Japan likes to have the ball at their feet, and sometimes you can't play the ball out if there's three USA forwards or attacking players pressing down their neck. So a big test for the United States. This is very much the golden generation of Japanese football. Not only did they win the Women's World Cup at the expense of the Americans, but they also finished top of Olympic Asian qualifying ahead of powerhouse China. So no complacency as of yet. They want more. They want to add another medal to their trophy cabinet. Even though this is a friendly Christian, we know from experience. I mean, just look at, <laughs> at the World Cup. Japan is going to play a full 90 plus minutes. So the U.S. can't think, oh, we've got it, this thing under control, you know, 10 minutes into this game. Angled ball in. The Japanese don't deal with it very well. Harm averted in the end, however. This one pumped in. Rampone with a good delivery there. It comes up for Abby Wambach, and she's got support from Tobin Heath, looking very spry and lively. This is Rapino. What can she conjure up? It's a good-looking ball, and there is Wambach, and there is goal number two. Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan, the one-two punch, and the U.S. has done it again. We talk about this in the last game against Sweden. Megan Rapino plays a great ball, a great ball in that zone where the defender can't get it and the goalkeeper can't come out and get it, and the only person who can, the big foot of Abby Wambach, muscling her way beyond the, the Japanese defender. Here we go. Megan Rapino stands up the defender. She recognizes the space is just in between in, in front of the goalkeeper. She can't come and get it. Abby pokes it in. It's a great goal. She did well to stay on side and she pokes it in for her 137th goal for the US women. And of course that puts her 21 behind the legendary Mia Hamm, but what a start, a horrific beginning here for the Japanese. U.S. trying to avoid complacency, but they've got their dream start here. But more so about the performance than the result today, I'm sure. I, I would suppose that the, the talking to that Pia Sundhaga gave the team after the Sweden game was, yes, we got a result. I'm happy about that. But there's a lot of things we need to do before the kickoff on July 25th against France because these teams will be ready come the Olympics, and we also need to be ready. So I think this is a much better looking play already than they had in the game against Sweden. Looking very sharp, stringing together some good passes, but just as we say, it's give it away. It's claimed here by the number nine, Naomi Kawasumi. And the favor is returned. Down the left-hand side here, and Wambach's come out into a wider role. She's got Morgan closed down, but there's a sea of white in front of her. <laughs> Japanese really need to sharpen their swords, so to speak. Looking rather dull to start. Keith dropping into that deep roll, and she's got support on the left-hand side from Kelly O'Hara. We talked about it earlier about how the back line is going to have to close the gap between the midfield and the back line. Christy Rampone just there stepped into the midfield to provide some pressure, and Japan gives up the ball. That's exactly what they need to do. Well played. Clearly flustering the Japanese. Sakaguchi can't claim. That's the right back, Kinga, who slides in. Good tackle there from the Japanese defender. Can they recover from their slow start? Wednesday, will they, they will take on Sweden in the final match here in Halmstad, Sweden. The coverage continues from Scandinavia. Well, what you know about Japan is they have one style. Mm -hmm. They put it on the ground, they play small passes, they have good combination play. Sometimes they do suffer the, the effects of not being super powerful and super athletic. Holy cow. Oh, a defensive miscue here. Hope Solo really caught unawares and more question marks in the back. 
it's just a lackadaisical pass by Chrissy Rampone. Having scored an own goal in, in a World Cup, I know that you can have miscommunication. Hope does a good job, actually, to deal with it because she was surprised. So it's an unnecessary corner, a chance for the Japanese to get a lifeline here. Standing over it, Ayamiyama. She'll take it short, the captain. It's plunked back in. It's a strong header to the far post. And once again, hearts a flutter back there. But the U.S. come away unscathed. And we said it again. I keep referencing the Sweden game, but I talked about how important it is to have good communication in the back line. If, anything, if there's any line that needs the most amount of commu communication, it's the back line. Chrissy Rampone could have just said, hope. And hope would have been like, oh, it's coming to me. So, you know, it's really, really critical that they have better communication, a little bit more cohesiveness, so that you don't make small mistakes like that, because France will take advantage of that come Olympics. Here's Rapino, Amy LaPelbet. Going back to right fullback, taking the place of Heather Mitz. United States searching for their first shutout since that 3-0 triumph over Brazil in their final match of the Kieran Cup in Japan. Here's Miyama, and she can't connect. They had the run coming down the left-hand side, but the U.S. able to claim, and the lively Rapino once again away. Winning her 50th cap on Saturday against the Swedes. The switch for O'Hara and Heath with the one touch now. Japanese don't know what hits them, and that one perhaps overhit from Rapino. Just be patient. It's not on. You don't have to play it. Megan's really actually usually pretty good at that. She won't play balls that you know don't make sense, but sometimes I think you just get excited when you go up to zero, for example. You just want more goals. You become a little bit greedy. Back to Kaiori. Here's a defender, Utsugi, at left back, and it's Come its way forward for Samishima. Once again, a little disarray here from the women in white. U.S. women will have the throw. Remember, the United States at that 1-0 win in the group stages in Beijing in 2008. An eternity ago. Even the posture of the U.S. players is much better in this game. Their heads are up, their chests are out, they're feeling comfortable. It, it looks better. And that's a great sign. You know, they hadn't played before Saturday since May 27th in that big 4-1 victory over China just outside of Philadelphia. Meanwhile, Abby Wambach feeling the brunt of this tackle. Kinga getting stuck in on the right-hand side. This is a big girls game, Christian. <laughs> Good step forward from Shannon Box to win it. She's done ever so well. And straight into that Japanese back line. They get the block in, but it hasn't been organized for them. That's Shannon Box's strength. She, she notices and recognizes when the ball squirts out, when she has to clean up a mess. And then she can actually go forward and hit a ball fairly well. I, I like the fact that she saw that opening and took her chance. U.S. women's only defeat here in 2012 coming the hands of the Japanese back on March 5th in the Algarve Cup. Good touch forward, but Kawasumi look on her the, first touch lets her down. Look at the far post. They're so good at playing small balls, but sometimes you're going to have to play a big one. In that situation, I think she, she should have played it across to the left midfielder who was running through. And Morgan will drop all the way back to reclaim possession. Rapino in space, acres of it for her. That's where she flourishes. Morgan in support now, and good circulation from the United States. It is, but right now, look at how flat they are up front. There's nobody in this whole center of the park. Lauren Cheney, I get it. Alex Morgan came back, and she went forward. But once you realize you're not getting it, come back into the middle. Cheney just trying to wriggle her way past the Japanese defenders, and perhaps a byproduct of just an embarrassment of attacking players here. So many attacking talents at the disposal of Pia Suntaga. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> Kinga. But, but this game, I think, is about being more efficient, uh, being more clinical, 
about kind of, you know, we've talked about working out the kinks or, you know, things like that. This is a game where you need to really evaluate those things and put them into practice. I, I'm not so sure I've seen enough from the U.S. team leading up to this game. This game looks much better, but leading up to this game that tells me this is what they were working on and it shows in the game. Japan started to settle just a bit. It's got to get better for them. Strong tackle, but the referee spotting something wrong with that. A free kick here for the Japanese. Woo! Well, welcome to the game. <laughs> and Lauren Cheney. <laughs> That's what she says. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Meaty challenge there for the number 12. Shannon Box, she's part of that central midfield partnership alongside Cheney. Saw them start against Sweden. Box coming off at halftime. I yes. think that's another question mark for Pina Suenhago. Who will be the starting central midfield core? You know, is it going to be midfield by committee or will it be, you know, a two or three midfield? Well, we shall see. Some time to address that before the United States opens up their group stage play on July 25th. They'll be taking on France at Hampden Park in Glasgow, Scotland. Here's Nagasoto. The block in from the U.S. and clear to out of harm's way. The flick is there for Morgan and Wambach left to run onto it, but Japan first to it. Pretty open start here, much like we saw against Sweden on Saturday. I feel the first 20 minutes of this game have been much better than the game against Sweden. Much more enjoyable, I think, as a fan, but I think technically better by the U.S. They seem to be uh, more confident, more comfortable. They and found I that pocket right here, Brandy, just between the two defenders, but their first touch once again letting them down, a lack of sharpness. Right. And again, 20 minutes in, you start to settle things down, you take that deep breath, you've kind of hit your your second win, so to speak, and now you're in the game. But what great skill that is right there by the number 17, Nagasato. There's a handball there on Rachel Bueller, but the referee a judging ball to hand as opposed to hand to ball. That's Ask. always, a, that always gets me. Which one is it? Hand it's... to ball, ball to hand. Does it hit the hand? Do you play it? Ah. The I'm, ambiguity, the gray area. I'm too emotional sometimes when I'm on the field. Well, it, so has, always... it has to be hand to ball for the referee to deem it a legitimate handball. All right. But we'll once again, it's up to the referee's discretion. We'll debate that later. <laughs> Plenty to talk about. Terry Henry is all I have to say. <laughs> together, together, it's a touch in the back from Tanaka. Kinga. Just beyond the attack. They haven't linked it together, but it's a testament to this high pressure from the United States making things very difficult. Lauren Cheney looking very tidy in possession, but in the end, giving it away. We haven't said her name a lot, and I'd like to say her name more. I, I think she's one of the Im very important cogs to the wheel for the U.S. team. She's got a great physical presence. She's got great touch on the ball. This is better from Japan. It's played up for Nagasoto. She's closed down by the U.S. defense. They're swarming around these white shirts. Is there a left-sided player on the park? Look at the gap. And look Sakaguchi. At that, look at that huge amount of space on the left side of the Japanese team. But good for the U.S. to close it down and force a shot from long range. Against Hope Solo, I would, I would let players shoot from 35 yards out. Not a bad tactic. Norio Sasaki, the 54-year-old, saw his Olympic side lose to the United States in Beijing in the semifinals in 2008. They exacted their revenge three years later, but it's a new era right now. Looking forward and not back. Good touch from Miyama. That's why she's taken the captain armband from Homare Sawa. I think Homare has done her duty as captain. I think she, you know, sometimes as the captain, you, you carry a load beyond, obviously, yourself and your team. In her case, her country for a long time. So, you know, you have to pl applaud her for what great work she's done for Japan. And Ivan Miyama, I think, is a very good player, but I think also a great leader for them. And the logical successor to the Japanese legend Sawa in her 178th appearance. This is a well-weighted ball, but once again, it's offside against Japan and Naomi Kawasumi. It's a great idea. Again, great combination play from Japan. 
what Kawasumi needs to do is just be a little bit more patient. She needs to run onto that. We know that ball's coming. Well, the Japanese know it's coming because they love to play it. If you hold it, the U.S. defender in the center for just a tad longer, now you run free with the ball in front of you. Don't have to be impatient in that situation. And Abby Wambach is taking her licks, colliding with Kyoko Yano. Second time we've seen her feel some after effects of some physical challenges here. And talking of the Algarve Cup, United States losing to Japan. Japan moving on to the final, losing 4-3 and a thriller in which the Germans took top honors. Here's the free kick. It's taken by Chini. It's a great delivery, and ricochets out and cleared away by Sakaguchi. Injury, a familiar theme here with Abi Wambach. A special Olympics for her because she had to miss with that broken leg all of Beijing four years ago. As a player, you don't think about getting hurt, but gosh, nobody wants to see that happen. And to have Abby go down in that game against Brazil was just heart-wrenching. And though not devastating in terms of the medal count, I think as, a, as far as a player goes, she, she is the heartbeat, I think, of this U.S. team and has been for many years. And you just hope for her and the rest of the team that they do stay healthy in these last two friendlies. Bueller getting stuck into <laughs> Yuki and Nagasoto, old enemies, seeing their rivalry <laughs> renewed. Well, I don't think Bueller ever saw a tackling potential that she didn't <laughs> like, so um, that's to be expected. But that's what you want out of your central defender, right? Absolutely. You have to have any player on the field needs a little bite. There's no doubt. You're not going to allow players to wander around the park and feel comfortable. You got to put a hand in their back. You got to kick them from time to time. I kicked Mia hand on occasion just to make sure <laughs> that she didn't get comfortable. I'm sure she appreciated that. But this is conceded a free kick here. It's Miyama straight into the U.S. wall. She gets a second opportunity. It's a good knockdown and cleared away by Bueller, who, by the way, picked up U.S.'s first yellow card since they've made their trip over to Sweden. No cautions on Saturday. And safety first approach here. No risks taken by the United States defender, Christy Rampone. That's a great play. Great play. Sometimes you're going to give up corner kicks. You don't want to do anything silly. Uh, just give it up, set yourself up. The U.S. is dominant in the air. All, however, Omari Sawa does have a tendency to sneak in between the lines, in between people, and score some flashy goals. And Miyama supplied the corner kick back on March 5th for Takasi, the U.S. beaten on a header. They don't want to lose another one like that again. It's a good delivery straight in, but the United States holds up well enough. The Japanese have them pinned in Miyama straight in. That's what one for the highlight reel for Yuki Nagasoto. Japan right back in it, 2-1. What is so glorious about this goal, not only that it was a diving header, but the composure when the ball does get cleared, that they just don't lump it back into the middle of the box. It comes out and they play it wide. One touch ball by Miyama. She may be the best in the world at crossing the ball on a dime. And what a great goal. Sensational stuff. Miyama to Nagasoto, a lifeline here for the Asians. They are right back in it. A very slow start, but they've really come to life. And a whole new ball game here in Almstad, Sweden, for the United States as their preparations take you know, an unexpected turn. But it's good, you know, uh, you don't want to take a goal, but it's something that helps you. You can work on something. If this were a training session, I would stop and say, okay, listen, when you're in the box defending, I don't care if you're a defender, a midfielder, or a forward, you need to body the player that's nearest you. They cannot beat you to the spot. And that is exactly why Nagasato scored on that goal is because she beat Rachel Bueller to the spot where that ball was. How will the United States react? It was positive fashion after a lot of Selshin and a lot of Shailen had one on Saturday. You'll need a similar kind of answer as it comes out wide for Kelly O'Hara. Amy LaPelbe. 69th appearance for the United States. Good linking play here as Morgan showing her mobility. Likewise for Rapino. It's onside for Alex Morgan. Much better here from the U.S. Wambach is waiting for it. She 
Gets the first touch, and it's straight in to the goalkeeper, Kaiori. But great approach play here from the Americans. Good possession, good ball movement, good movement off the ball. Here is Alex Morgan playing the ball across to Abby Wambach. What you might not have seen on that replay is that Abby Wambach was close to that defender, and she slowed her run down because she saw that cross coming. Great awareness, great spatial awareness. Unfortunately, it hit her a little bit lower than I think she had hoped. But again, good play by the U.S. 4-1 in terms of shots on goal. The U.S. able to pry them open frequently. Wambach, so much success as of late. And this is better from Japan. They're starting to string some good possession. What Japan does so well is when they play it to the high forward, the, the players that are now below the ball get up close underneath so they can have that combination play. That's really difficult to defend because that forces the forwards and the midfielders to turn around towards their own goal and chase back. Be Wambach with a goal and an assist. A 3-1 win over Sweden here on Saturday at the very same ground. Back to Kaiori. The undisputed number one for Japan. She was in goal in the Women's World Cup final last summer in Germany. I think they did a statistic. She's four inches shorter than Hope Solo. As a goalkeeper, you don't want to be four inches shorter than anything. It's Shannon Box here is colliding. Again, we talk about communication. There's not tens of thousands of people in the stands. It's not too loud to hear each other. So, you, you know, Kelly O'Hara, no disrespect, she's in a position to see the whole field. She needs to let Shannon Box know she's coming so you don't have that collision. You know, versatile facet of this U.S. attack in Kelly O'Hara. She can play in midfield as well as left back. Of course, with the injury to Ali Krieger, it's changed things up for the United States. Great first touch here. Alex Morgan is away. Wambach in support. Morgan outpacing everyone. It's a good attempt at the save off the woodwork, and Wambach stabs it straight to the Japan goalkeeper. How on earth the United States didn't score, we'll never know. Well, I'll know. That's a round post, my friend. <laughs> What a run, though, from Alex Morgan. Again, it, it's exactly what Alex Morgan does well. She instinctively recognizes a, a situation where the opponent makes a bad touch, and she takes advantage. She makes a good, long dribble in a, in a positive way. It's a well-weighted ball from Nagasoto to link up with Naomi Kawasumi. He could do with a good spell of possession right about now. The late run at the top of the penalty area dealt with in good fashion by the United States and a chance for Cheney to release Morgan. A oh, wonderful first touch. Alex Morgan really impressing everyone. It's Alex Morgan. I believe the whistle had blown, but she is really turning it on here in the first half. Well, as we see here, she's just, again, like against Sweden, she just uses her strength, her power, and her quickness to just overrun the Japanese defender. I love it. Great long dribbles. These are great. She can get her head up. She recognizes that the back post is, the far post is open. Unfortunately, she measures it. We, we call it getting a little cutesy with the post. And, you know, it hits, it hits that post and comes out to Abby Wambach. No goal, but great attempt. And one of the unheralded characteristics of Morgan, her strength was such a slight build, but Rapino is stolen away once again, and she'll ping one across. Goalkeeper gets a hand to it. They are in a world of hurt right now. Japan on the ropes, Heath playing it for Cheney. U.S. looking to take another bite. Good spell from the United States. I have my notes here. Keys for Japan, no unnecessary giveaways. Don't be alarmed by the pressure. It seems those two things in the last few minutes have kind of gotten to them. It's a great response from the United States women after the goal from Nagasoto. They won't get the shutout, however. Still looking for a large margin of victory. They've only lost once without going to penalties against the Japan women. Good run by Lauren Cheney. Unfortunately, just a little heavy there by Megan Rapino. That's, that's a Japanese-style play right there where they try and slip the ball in between the two center backs, I love that pass. I think it's very sophisticated. It's fun to watch. 
They were dazzling in Germany a year ago. Some dubbing them the Barcelona of the women's game at the international level. Well, when you have the ability to move the ball around the field on the ground with great, with your head up, with you know, you feel like you're, you're carefree. There's no pressure. It's, it's quite stunning to watch. And here's Japan once again, Kawasumi, but can't find that final link. It's getting better, however. I love the fact that they don't get rattled out of their system either. They don't just like, you know, allow the pressure to force them not to play on the ground or to be patient on the ball. I think it's something that young players in this country actually can look at as an example. They do preach the technique and they are well drilled. Well, it's one back here by Nagasoto. An error from the United States goes unpunished. Well, Nagasoto t attempted to curl that ball into the far post. It just got a little bit away from her. And, and the fact that she got her head up to see that that upper V was open, uh, I think, just speaks to her quality. And Nagasoto, of course, took the second penalty in Frankfurt and had it saved by Hope Solo. So she might have her own agenda <laughs> here today. You look at the shots and talk about open play. 11 in total, the United States with three more than their adversaries. Well, Japan's not a team that gets a lot of shots in a game. They just possess the ball so much. They're patient. But they've had some good ones today, and the goal certainly spectacular. Here's the bad giveaway. Another careless giveaway. They can ill afford to do this. It's Abby Wambach bearing down Morgans. She stays on side, but it's a good recovery from Japan. Kinga tracking back, and Otsugi wins it. Unfortunately, I don't think this is a great run by Alex Morgan because she runs right across the front of Abby Wambach. Now, that's a little sketchy. Referee, that could be a that could be a foul. Just leaves that foot in. Referee uninterested in the appeals from the U.S. women for the penalty. Heavy ball from Naga Soto trying to play it into the path here for Kawasumi. You mentioned shots. The United States actually outshot in terms of attempts on target by the Swedish, six to five on Saturday, despite outshooting the Swedes 13 to 10 overall. Cheney. Good play by Cheney. Really is tidy in possession, isn't she? She is. For, for a player with such presence physically, I think she does have great footwork. Morgan all the way to midfield. It's a knock-on effect here, and it comes out positively here for the United States. Great ball for Megan Rapino, holding up her run. Box. And a poor giveaway. And especially in a one-touch situation, she doesn't have pressure. I think she's trying to do the right thing. You know, te sometimes technically those things break down, but in, in her position, she should do a little bit better with that. Sakaguchi sitting in front of that Japanese back four. She is the linchpin there. Comes out wide for Aya Samashima. Plays her club football for Montpellier in France. Developing a winning tradition over there as the men won the Ligue 1 title this year. Miyama. Once again, one of the focal points, and it's come out for Kinga. Causing some problems on the left-hand side of the USA defense. You know, that, that's a scenario for Kelly O'Hara where she has to evaluate very quickly. Do you play the player that's closest to you or do you play the player that's coming through with the ball? Again, that's a communication issue that they'll have to sort out. Third corner here for the Japanese. They were successful on the dead ball situation. Last time out, we'll see what comes up this time. Miyama once again to take it off that left foot. And Rapino hmm. able to get to it first. She's trying to close down the Japanese number eight, and they'll have corner number four. That's a good call by Hope Solo. She's begging there for Rapino to head the ball out. You can't just chest it. Again, you have to do the right things at the right time, a la Christine Lilly. She's the perfect example of that. Another good ball from the Japan captain. Drops out here for Utsugi. She'll ping one into the corner. Miyama arriving, hits it first time, but that one just goes askew. 
It Japanese was, looking very well rehearsed on their dead ball situations. Well, the, the thing about the Japanese is they do play. They, they practice and practice and practice dead ball situations most of the time because the facilities in their training grounds and their home leagues, they, they have small training grounds, not a lot of space, so they become really well versed at put the ball down, get it into play. If, you know, we've done a long ball, you know, on a corner kick, let's play a short one. So they're really good at mixing the play up. Japanese finishing fourth. In Beijing 2008, losing in the semifinals and then losing the bronze medal match to the Germans. Looking to take home some medal of sorts coming up in London here in just over a month's time. So here's the scenario we've been talking about. Free kick in the middle of the park. Look at the, look at the concentration of players. I don't think anybody's wider than the box. Oh, she's just on the end of the box. I like the fact that they've done that. And Rapino's ball just can't get there. Hoofed forward in Japan and gets ahead to it. Kawasumi dropping back, trying to clear their line right now. The ball by Amy LaPelvet is a straight ball to a straight run. The fact it has to be so perfect, it's almost impossible to make. Just have the composure to put the ball on the ground, make one extra pass, then find somebody open. Kawasumi coming back with it for Nagasoto. This is better from Japan. Starting to ping it around from Sakaguchi, and she hits one long. Beautiful ball, great first touch, and Kinga trying to latch onto it. They'll come out for an American throw. Well won back here by Harami Sawa. Yes, yes. See what the modus operandi is for the U.S. Hit it long and let Morgan get in behind. They've been so dangerous on their counterattacks. I think they'd like to say it as we understand when we've t we've t we can take advantage of a transition period. You know, it's not like they don't want to play counterattack soccer, but if Japan is throwing their wide players forward, that leaves room for Alex Morgan to run into. Similar 4-4-2 setup for Japan as the Americans. Slight difference in midfield. That's where the United States are looking to make those final tweaks. Mueller hitting this one long. Abby Wambach controls. Long searching ball into the corner for Tobin Heath, who's switched over to the near side. This is where she can be troublesome. Pulls one in. They don't deal with it very well. A big error in the back from Japan. The U.S. keeps the move going. Seemed like quite an innocuous ball across the middle, but it was if, routine, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, if not dealt with right, it can turn into <laughs> a real problem. Yes. Rampone, of all people, plays it forward. <laughs> Sanashima. It did well to keep it in there from Nagasoto. Maybe she'd be thinking that a throw wouldn't be so bad there. <laughs> Rampone on her 258th appearance for the United States women. Only Christine Lillian, Mia Hamm, and Julie Foudy have made more appearances for the United States. That's some good company right there. A familiar generation of players. A quality generation. Yes. Last five minutes of the half, always dangerous. We, we talk about... Uh, as a player, we've talked about, you know, the last five minutes. Here's Abby Wombach twisting and turning and nearly found her way to goal number two. Where a lot of goals come and are taken, so you have to be sharp. Abby does a great job of holding up Yano, and she just spins her because she's just physically stronger. Great touch. Recognizes. Oh, she did get a little bit of a, a clip on her heel that kind of forced her off balance. Trying to beat the keeper to the near post, but the strength of Abi Wamba causing this Japanese defense all kinds of problems. There's not too many players in the world who can physically outperform Abi Wamba in a 1v1 posting up situation. Timeless, she seems to have been around forever. Remember, she scored that great header in the World Cup final. What a moment that was. <laughs> I think it set the world on fire. I think it just. Nearly set a Twitter Excitement. record as well. 
What a tournament. Here's Cheney stealing away. This looks very good for the United States. He's trying to play it in, but Morgan had held up her run. Well, the, the ball was too heavy by, by Cheney. I think she could have let that ball go to Alex Morgan a little bit earlier. But again, a little softer into more space allows Alex Morgan to run onto the ball as opposed to having to chase it down. But I think also in that situation, Alex has to believe she has to keep that run going. The ball is going to come from Lauren. Japan in their six matches in 2012. Four wins, one draw, and one defeat. No pushover. To take your hats off to the United States, though. They've been absolutely superb. 12 victories, one draw, one defeat in their 14 matches. But get this, they've scored 62 times, <laughs> conceding on just six occasions. Oh, boy. Oh, it's given away. Morgan with a virtual gift here. She's got Wambach, but overhits it for her strike partner. But it's good that they're looking for each other. The fact that Alex didn't get that and just think, I need to go to goal. I think she goes towards the goal in an aggressive manner, but also has her eyes up, which is says something about her confidence and her comfort on the ball in tight situations. Big woman, little woman partnership, which <laughs> is usually so effective. And it's proven so once again. They're really starting to find a great understanding together. Well, they complement each other well because their strengths... They're not completely opposite of each other, but I think they work well with what each one is good at. Alex has great speed and great pace and power. Abby has a great physical presence, can win the ball in the air. Also is good when the ball gets into her feet, she can lay it off. They can both kind of run and spin off of players, so they, they do complement each other quite well. They're both lethal finishers. <laughs> yeah. A goal from Abby Wambach, adding to those six goals she had in CONCACAF Olympic qualifying. We move into the final minute plus stoppage time. Orient's Ball Stadium in Halmstad, Sweden. Match number two of three in the lead up to London 2012 for the United States. Cheney shoring things up in the center of the park. That's where she is at her best, but gives it away. Yeah, I think she's just trying to make too much happen there. Just in that situation, it's just about connecting passes and keeping possession. The U.S. did a great job, as they did right here, of condensing the field, forcing a turnover. Here comes Abby Wambach once again, straight into Kaori, but a nervous moment once again for Japan. Well, you know that the U.S. is going to get chances, but you don't want to give them chances by turning the ball over too easily in the midfield, and now they're on a counterattack. I think that's the one thing perhaps Japan will be talking about at halftime. The U.S. will talk about doing a, as good of a job as they have done in the last five minutes about condensing the space, forcing Japan to play super accurate passes, and not letting them get in behind. Well, great start from the United States. They grabbed two goals in the first ten minutes. It was Alex Morgan played in by Tobin Heath and then Abby Wombach. Megan Rapino picking her out, and that made it 2-0, but Naga Soto on a wonder goal on a ping across from Miyama. That is where we stand in Halmstad. The United States 2, Japan 1. Keep it right here on Universal Sports. We're back with a look back at the first half highlights next. And we welcome you back to our coverage here on Universal Sports, the lead-up to London 2012 going. As according to plan, you would have to say the United States on goals from Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach. However, Nagasoto and company pegging one back. It's not beyond reach here for the Japanese. We welcome you back inside our studios. Christian Miles alongside two-time Olympic gold medalist Brandy Chastain. Uh, certainly a bright start for the USA, Brandy. I love it. I think this is a great first half, especially after the halves they had against Sweden, which weren't, I don't think, up to their standard. They came out with confidence. They were good on the ball. They got two goals in the first half. I think Pia's going into halftime feeling really good. All right. They've got plenty of reason to feel good. Both goals coming in the first 10 minutes. Let's take a look back at our halftime highlights. And it was Tobin Heath playing it in, and Alex Morgan, you know who. She cannot stop scoring goals. I love it, and I love the fact that she hits this ball right through the middle of it. Look at it, just bending and dipping into it towards that far post. 26 in 41 appearances, 10 minutes. On the 10th minute, however, the United States, well, they would double up to make it 2-0, and slipping it home is Abby Wambach. 
Another great ball by Megan Rapino behind the defense in front of the goalkeeper. Only Abby Wambach could get that ball, and she does. She finishes just as she always does. And then this one will be pinged across here, which sit up nicely for Miyama. And what a ball across. Finishing it so well was Nagasoto. It's a great goal, not only because it's a diving header, as I said, and it's what skill does that take? But the fact that Japan didn't panic when the ball came out on the first one, they send it wide. Miyama, again, world class in crossing, great goal. All right, you mentioned Pia Sundhaga, the U.S. women's coach, has to be happy. What exactly is she saying to her players at halftime? Better possession, better movement of the ball, great goals. Keep that up. The back line actually stepping into the midfield to force pressure on a midfield Japanese player or a forward. Now, what she's saying we need to do a little bit more of is, again, be tighter in the back line. Don't allow them to make those combination play around the box. Be solid. Finish the game. Yeah, all credit to the Japanese. They had a good response. However, the United States still on top in Halmstad. Two goals to one is the scoreline. We're back with more on Universal Sports right after this. And we welcome you back to our coverage of the United States women's national team in the lead up to London 2012. The USA up two goals to one strikes from Alex Morgan and Abby Wombach. However, Nagasoto with the reply for the Japanese. Well, as the stars and stripes look ahead to London 2012, we had a chance to catch up with head coach Pia Sundhaga and some of the players who are confident of a third consecutive Olympic gold medal. This team is one of the best teams that you're gonna see. You're competitors. And you start with Hope Soul in the back. She is very demanding when it comes to herself, but also with her teammates. And you have Christy Rampo, the captain. I think the best captain I've ever come across. Overall, I think we're showing America, you know, a great team. Morgan trying to get around. Morgan's ball deflected, and there's one back with the goal. Every four years, you get to go and represent your nation and represent your country in a way that you hope to inspire people. We're competitors, so we want to win. That's why we do what we do. That's what's so great about the Olympics. It pushes people beyond their own limits. Of course I want the gold medal. It's always been everything to me, but I have finally learned that it truly is about the journey, and that is beyond winning a medal. Um, and I never thought I would say it, but I'm proud to say that. Now the United States very confident as we look ahead to London 2012 here and perhaps trying to finish off what they couldn't finish at the Women's World Cup last summer in Germany. Absolutely. The Olympic Games, as Hope Sola said, is about a journey. And if you have a good journey with positive play leading up to it, you will find yourself standing on that podium with that gold medal around your neck. All right, the United States trying to do it for a third consecutive time, and they're on route into doing just that. Two goals to one. In Halmstad, we're going to step aside, but the second half is coming up next on Universal Sports. And welcome back to Universal Sports. The United States women getting set to kick off the second half against Japan. They lead two goals to one thanks to Alex Morgan and Abby Wombach. And another couple of changes here for head coach Pia Sundhaga. Becky Sauerbrunn has come in for Rachel Bueller in the center of defense. And Carly Lloyd will replace Megan Rapino in midfield. The United States will not get the shutout. However, a very impressive start to this one. Both goals coming in the first 10 minutes from the irrepressible duo who are really becoming amongst the world's best partnerships. We'll see how things sort themselves out. All credit to the Japanese. They came came out swinging after the goal. It came on the 25th minute as Miyama's ping across found Nagasoto with that diving header at the near post, beating Hope Solo. Some good spells of possession, but the Americans themselves showing a good response and some positive moments towards the end of the first half. So Carly Lloyd shoring things up. We'll see how she performs in the center of the park. She came on, of course, at halftime against Sweden. Likewise for Becky Sauerbrunn getting a chance to shine once again for the 52-year-old Swedish-born USA head coach, Pia Sundhaga. The second of three friendlies in the lead-up to London 2012 is the United States I a third consecutive Olympic gold medal at the Summer Olympic Games, and we are underway here on Universal Sports. Glad you're along with us. Christian Miles alongside 
the two-time Olympic soccer gold medalist Brandy Chastain. So we see the substitutions here. Sauerbrunn in as well as Lloyd Brandy. We look to the second half. What's the approach for the Americans? More of the same, a little better communication in the back line, condense the field again, force Japan to try and play out of their comfort zone. Transition, attack, they've already been good at that, two goals. Keep that going. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. A couple of tweaks. United States making three halftime subs on Saturday, just two. We'll see what happens here. Japanese looking ahead to their own Olympic campaign. It's not going to be easy for them. They have to take on U.S. CONCACAF rivals Canada in Coventry on July 25th. Three days later at the same venue against the Swedes, who they will face on June 20th in Halmstad. And then on the 31st of July, their final group stage clash against the South Africans in Cardiff in Wales. Up and over the top, and that will summon Christy Rampone, the captain, no doubt about that clearance. So a tweak here in the center. We'll see Rampone and Sauerbrunn partner. A little too far beyond Yuki Nagasoto. Kelly O'Hara does a good job of recovering on that ball just to touch it over the end line. She doesn't see Nagasato out there. or Her body language doesn't show that she sees her running that behind the line. But good job in recovery. But now here comes the hard work. This is where Japan excelled in the first half and scored their goal. You wouldn't think it, but they have been nifty, not quarters. Number five, the U.S. still yet to take one. Miyama once again. This time she'll take it short. They're well schooled in this department. It comes out, and Miyama trying to hit one across. Not the best of deliveries. The second ball is there, and the United States sweeps it clear. What? what? <laughs> you know, J Japan doesn't tower over anyone. So they know their strengths. They send a couple crosses from corners in there, Miyama does, and then they play one on the ground and then they play numbers around. When the ball gets played, they get so many numbers around the ball on the ground. It's, it's great to see. Unfortunately, that flick for Sawa doesn't come off, but it does cause the U.S. to be stretched and unbalanced and they get a good opportunity. What I was going to say to you before is for the, the road for Japan to the Olympics, the most difficult thing about winning a World Cup is now everybody wants to beat you. So can they handle that pressure going into the Olympic Games, I think is the biggest question for yeah, them. Yeah, they always say it's almost easier to claim your first honor. It's even harder to defend it. Absolutely. Being number one is not easy. Here's Miyama. She had the assists and plays it forward for Kinga, an attack-minded fullback Kinga. She scored the last time these two met in Sendai on April Fool's Day. Alex Morgan with the reply in the second half, and here is the aforementioned. And this is always dangerous. A couple of stepovers. How confident is she? Alex Morgan showing a little too much of it in the end, but she really has her head up, and why not? Uh, she's got great confidence on the ball, and that's what you hope in a, in a, in a striker. A player that, uh, here we go, Shannon Box, just being aggressive. It's okay in the midfield third when you turn the ball over. Get the team behind the ball set up. No harm on that foul. And the only booking going to Beeler. There you get a look at Shannon Box, the 34-year-old. Her 160th start. And, of course, trying to capitalize once again. Saturday, she assisted Alex Morgan. And then coming on the United States' second goal against the Swedes. That made it 2-0 before the 3-1 victory. If I was Coach Norio Sasaki, I'd remind Kinga... Getting forward is great. Do not lose the ball back or square because the U.S. will certainly play it forward to Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach in transition for a counterattack. Please. Carly Lloyd with a clever little back heel in the center. Interesting to see how that trio sorts itself out. Lloyd, Box, and Cheney in the center of the park. They've won it back here. More steal for the U.S. Tobin Heath. On the right-hand side now, taking up that role. Look forward now. The U.S. surveying their options. The cross, the end product, eventually comes out wide for Abby Wambach, who pulls one across. And Japan just not convincing enough in their clearance. And that late attempt from Box, well high. 
We see Alex Morgan running through here again, smashing that ball into the far post. Here's Megan Rapino's cross on the six yard, the top of the six yard box. That's dangerous. And Miyama's cross to Nagasato. What a great diving header. It's good goals. And I mentioned the differences between Alex Morgan and Abby Wombach, but they do have one striking similarity, and that is ruthless finishing ability from both of them, just yep. in different areas. They're relentless in the goal, and they're relentless. They're willing to put their body out there. They, they do not mind a little contact. They sometimes actually even, I think, love to assert themselves physically over their opponent, and it's, that's what makes them so good. Big switch for the Japanese. It comes out wide on the left-hand side. Nagasoto. Trying to distribute. She holds things up and brings others in very well. They'll spray it over for Miyama. She's on side. Clever ball. Kinga looking for that final product. What a delivery. And a huge brush with disaster, but it's averted by the narrowest of margins. Japan prying open this U.S. defense. Well, you hear Rachel Bueller telling Kelly O'Hara to go out there, but what also has to happen is see this underlying run from the midfield, the number two from Japan, Kinga, running through the center. She's the right back. She's running through the middle of the, the goal box. So the U.S. has to sort that out right away. As soon as they see that run coming, Rachel Bueller either has to leave her player and come, or they have to see it earlier and get set up. If you like free-flowing open football, that was a great move in the back heel. Just didn't come off in the end there from Ono in the final product. Something for the U.S. to think about. It is something for them to think about because France has crafty players like Nassib who can do those crafty little things in tight spaces, back heels, flicks, running behind. It's a good start to the second half for the Japanese. That one doesn't make its way to Miyama, picked off rather easily by the Stars and Stripes. And once again, Alex Morgan, hint of a handball there. The referee waves it on. A touch from right back. Wabi Wambach trying to chest it forward. And you know, Japan able to dodge the bullet. It's a good effort by Abby. I think it's the right choice. Tobin Heath didn't get the ball far enough for Abby to run onto it. I think she was hoping that that ball would be out in front of her. But she tries to do the right thing to knock it down to her teammate at the top of the box. O'Hara just lumping it up there. Tracked down by Aya Samashima. They like to play it out of the back and keep it on the floor. At times to their detriment, Japan. Nagasoto dropping deep. U.S. closing down ever so well. It's popped out wide. Heath, Morgan. You see what she's trying to do, and Wambach has it poked away. A chance for Japan to counterattack, and it's a one versus two situation. Now for the number 17, Yuki Nagasoto. She scored in the first half, and she'll need some help if they want to do it in the second. Well, the thing that Japan lacks is a thing that, that the U.S. has. The ability to, when the ball does go in counterattack situation, is to beat the defense on the dribble. It's kind of a, a Marta situation. It's very dangerous when Marta gets the ball in a counterattack because she can beat players on the run. Japan, not so much. Lloyd for Heath. Trying to find the supply line once again. And two marks for Abby Wambach. Box just putting it in there. And finally controlled by Mizuho Sakaguchi. Remember, Japan bringing back seven of the 11 starters from the Women's World Cup final in this match. Still have that solid core and that nucleus intact as the revolution continues for them. Really a burgeoning rivalry in women's world football between these two. Third time they've met since the beginning of March. It is, and it, I think it's a respectful rivalry, which is great. I, you know, back in the days when it was Norway, China, there was a little bit of um, nastiness about it. I think there's an aggressiveness and aggressive spirit about these, this rivalry, but I think it is respectful. Great story in Germany last summer. As Kinga just won't get to it. A tad too heavy from Miyama in the end, but of course, the tragedy that beset Japan early in 2011 and it was really gave the nation something to get behind and 
lifted their spirits. Without doubt. As only football, I think, or soccer can. And it's transcendent, isn't it? Expect to see the same coming up at the 2012 Summer Games in London. Remember the final at Grand Old Wembley Stadium, which has been renovated, and boy, is it a plush venue. Wow, that's a, that's a player's dream right there. Japan continuing their good spell. Just can't connect in the final third. Remember, these two could meet in the knockout stages in the Olympics if things set themselves up well. I mean, they're in opposite groups, but you never know. I think any time, it used to be that when the U.S. was playing a game, friendly or not, they had a mental and a psychological edge over their opponent that they were the U.S. would win the game. I think that's changed a little bit for this rivalry between Japan because of the last three results, which may, I think that's a healthy thing for women's soccer. A bit of breath of fresh air. Nagasoto dispossessed. Brawny stuff in the back. The U.S. doing exactly what they should and winning back the ball. Good defending. Good early quick transition to defending. Wins the ball back. A lot of steel, they say. A lot of tough tackling ball winners. Or as we like to say here in the soccer world, destroyers to win the ball back. <laughs> well, you have to have a, a, a balance, right? You need players who can tackle when it's time to tackle, to make a statement, to put the other team, have a little bit of put fear into their heart. But you also have to have the savviness and the ability to play and dance on the ball. So it's going to be a double switch here for the Japanese, and they're going to bring on the defender, Saki Kumagai, replacing the legend, Sawa, who comes out on her seven. 178th appearance. We'll see how things shore up, and they will bring in Kozue Ando, midfielder who plays her club football in Germany. Now on her 102nd appearance for her country. Which might be a tactical switch here. We'll see how things round out for the Japanese. It could also be just what Pia Suntaga is doing, giving players a chance to play in high-level matches, get some time on the pitch under their belt so that when the big game does come and there's no nervousness or fear about being on the pitch. U.S. in their second of three friendlies leading up to London 2012. This, of course, the first of three for the Japanese women on Wednesday in Holmstein. They will take on the host Sweden and then another friendly coming up against the Australians in Paris, or rather Tokyo. Paris, Tokyo, big city. <laughs> Bright lights. I get confused. <laughs> Lloyd tried to play it through. <laughs> Easy for you, world traveler. <laughs> Substitute Ando brings it down. Yes. And it's broken up nicely. We talk about destroyers. There's that ball winner. Lloyd plays it into the path. It's Alex Morgan. Oh. And she just sends it high. Uh, one of the few times we say Alex Morgan didn't choose the right surface and didn't finish well. But great interception by Carly Lloyd and a wonderfully weighted pass between the two center backs. Unfortunate for Alex, she did not have the finish that she'd hoped for. But again, I think it, it shows how dangerous the U.S. is in transition. When they can win the ball higher up the park in the attacking half, they can score goals or have chances to score goals uh, with one or two touches. Meaty challenge there on the far side as Samashima hits the deck under the boots of Tobin Heath. You get a look at the free kicks. Japan with a big edge. Something the U.S. will really want to tidy up. They don't want to concede many dead balls. There's times when you give up free kicks in the, in the center of the field where it's, you know, transition and you want to get your team back. That's fine. Not a, around the top of the box. Not uh, when you have the run of the play. If that's the only hope that the other team has, you do not want to give up free kicks. Shannon Box for the United States. Good ball. It's a positive to get Kelly O'Hara into the attacking half. Unfortunately, she was off balance there. But that's a good sign. Once again, giveaway. Yep, and Alex Morgan only too happy to oblige. She goes alone. It's Alex Morgan for the United States. It's Alex Morgan. She's turning it into a show. It's a personal highlight reel of sorts. 
The United States, three, Japan, one. Again, we talk about transition, and here Alex Morgan does a good job. The U.S. actually does a good job of pressuring Japan. They give the ball away, and what does Alex do? I'm going to make you pay for me <laughs> missing the last shot I had. She runs past Yano. She runs past Sakaguchi and Kaiori. No chance. Far post finished on the ground. Excellent goal. Natural left-footed player, but equally adept with the right. An extra dimension for the United States. Alex Morgan, 17 goals in 2012. Stunning stuff. And once again, the Japanese very sloppy. The U.S. looking for a fourth. It's Tobin Heath leading the charge all by her lonesome. Finally, support arrives with the cavalry a little too late. So Alex Morgan up to her old tricks. <laughs> Scored twice against China on May 27th in that 4-1 win in Philadelphia. Had a goal on Saturday, two today, not too shabby. What that goal reminds me of and it, it reminds me to share is that in the 94 Men's World Cup, there was a statistic done by the technical team. Most goals were scored with three or fewer touches, which means that when you transition off of one ball in the attacking half, the likelihood of scoring a goal is pretty high. Let the ball do the work. Or just have good team defending. You have good team shape, good team pressure, force the other team to give up the ball in your positive half, and you can score a goal. It helps when you've got such great players as well. Alex Morgan, star on the rise, the 22-year-old out of Diamond Bar, California. By the way, half of this USA team either from California or the New Jersey area. Interesting. East Coast, West Coast. <laughs> Bookends. Huh? Yes, well, we'll see which one's better, but certainly they're coming together for a great product. U.S. looking pretty good in their charge for a third consecutive Olympic gold medal. Beat Brazil back in 2004 in Athens, and of course in 2008, the same opponent. So now what I'm turning my thinking to, what would Pia, what should Pia do in this situation? Abby Wambach, substitution. Alex Morgan, substitution. Because you don't want to lose them to anything silly. You're winning this game already. You've seen what you need to see out of them. They've done the things that you've probably talked about at halftime and in training. They've gotten 64 minute into the 64th minute looking good. And I think, again, you need to give some more time to Amy Rodriguez, perhaps. Sar is a sub. This is better from Japan. Looking for a lifeline here. It's pulled back. Support late in arrival. And oh, my goodness. Finishing, we'll have to say, not of the highest order. Technically, obviously, a breakdown there. She hits, gets underneath the ball. But here's technically good finishing. Just slotting it into the far post, the inside of the right foot. Good finish. Make it 27 in 41 appearances for the U.S. of A. Pia Sundhaga. She loves it, and she has got a superb duo up top. They are going to be one of the best at the Olympic Games, no doubt. Well, what's so great about their, again, we talked about that they complement each other, but they also have to have, the other team has to be aware of them. They can't leave them in open space, and if they do, they suffer the consequences. Wambach twisting and turning, goes down under the challenge of Otsugi. Time for a substitution. I'm just going to throw that out there. Just a little niggling challenge. Yeah, but the little things start to add up over time, and there's no reason to put a player like Abby Wambach through that. It's, it's just unnecessary. And she is 32 years old. You oh, have she's to take young. That, take that into consideration. I wasn't implying anything. No, no, but I just think in terms of age, I, I don't feel that it's the age thing. I just think it's like, you know, you want your players healthy and at their healthiest come the beginning of the tournament. Remember, with that broken leg in 2008, everybody holding their breath, want to keep her fit. She's going to be at the center of the Olympic charge for the United States. It pops out wide now for Shannon Box, the old veteran. 
and turn 35 on June 29th. And then you see the referee's assistant with the flag up. Once it's a good, good look by Abby Wambach to play it out wide off that free kick. It broke down. Unfortunately, Shannon Box could not get back in, in an onside position quickly enough. But a good thought. U.S. trying to fine-tune things. Get that extra bit of sharpness. They haven't played a lot of games as of late until their recent track over to Sweden. They had that training camp in Princeton, New Jersey. And the favors returned in terms of offside, <laughs> this time going against Japan. You know, they haven't had a lot of games, but some things are like riding a bike. Scoring goals are habitual, you know, I think that's why Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach are so good. They score a lot of goals. They probably score and spend a lot of time in front of the goal in training. So they have a lot of comfort level there. So, you know, no matter if they've played a lot of games or not, that right there is their comfort level and what they go to. Brought down by Carly Lloyd. She'll spray it wide. The Pelbet to the center now. Bueller for the halftime substitute, Becky Sauerbrunn, on his 23rd appearance for her country. She's got the support from Kelly O'Hara. This is a good spell. This is what will impress Pia Suntaga. They want to string some possession together here, but just as we say it, the U.S. coughs it up in their attacking half. Ando claims this is Miyama and better for Japan. You know, we talk about possession. It's not possession for possession's sake, however. It's not just playing square balls. Kelly O'Hara there committing the foul, mainly, I think, because they lost possession in the midfield with square passes. She either has to try to make a run to get in behind to get the ball or retreat and get into a good cover position earlier. U.S. substitutes coming up. First, the dead ball, Miyama. Straight off the head of Shannon Box. Bueller gets one to it. It's Ando nudging it through, but it's just too far beyond Saki Kumagai, the Frankfurt attacker. Ando, one of those substitutes playing in Germany on her 102nd appearance. One of four players that have made a century or more than 100 appearances for their country. You don't see players like Ando pressure into making a bad technical choice. But she was there by the U.S. team, which, oof. Well, Tough. that's a statement. That's what I'm talking about, Christian. Don't come in here unless Cheney. you want to feel the heat Cheney. of Becky Sauerbrunn. I love it. Randy Chastain says bring it. So Heather O'Reilly, who was a starter, one of those two changes from the Sweden match, she'll come on and replace Lauren Cheney. A lot of changes coming up here for Pia Suntaga. So Heather O'Reilly, who had an impressive performance, She'll come on once again. Had the assist on the Abby Wombach goal. Amy LaPelbet, her shift is over. Heather Mitz, just like for like swap on the right hand side of defense for the United States women. Mitz, of course, the other starter from Sweden who sat out and started today on the substitutes bench. And Alex Morgan, once again on target, two goals today, and she will come off a job well done. And A Rod, Amy Rodriguez. The third switch for the U.S., their fifth in total. Just when you think you've seen the worst of it, and Japanese defender, you got to deal with Amy Rodriguez <laughs> right. and company coming out. It just doesn't get any easier, does no, it? No, it doesn't get easier. But the, the difficult thing for Amy Rodriguez in this situation, even though the game seems to be in hand for the U.S., is her desire to want to make an impression to the coach and her teammates that she deserves to be on that field. And, what a hit that was from Japan. Cop catching the United States unaware. Something out of nothing from Mizuho Sakaguchi. What great technique. Look at how she strikes through that ball, getting off her standing foot. I don't think she surprises Hope Solo, but it, one inch perhaps lower, that ball's in the net. All is not safe, and danger was lurking. U.S. perhaps caught napping nearly. Hope Solo looked very good against Sweden. Not a lot to do today, despite being beaten once. Cannot be faulted for conceding that wonderful header from Nagasoto. Here's Miyama, the Japanese captain, reclaims possession. Oh. Miyama will be very familiar with a lot of these American players. She spent some time 
in the old WPS with the LA Soul, St. Louis Athletica, and the Atlanta Beat. And now the new Japanese captain, and we'll see a change from then as Mariyuma is going to come in for Kawasumi. I had the pleasure of playing against Miyama. It's a, play, it's a player that you like to play against because she's a good player. She forces you to be on your game, on your edge. And you know if you've done something against her, you've done a good job. Technically gifted. And Mitz, she's got the attacker on her back. Can't play it back to Hope Solo. However, ultimately, no serious harm done. The corners stack up, though, here for the Japanese. The switch will be made. Kawasumi coming off. And... Marayuma comes on, like for like, a forward for a forward. Using my best Japanese from the mid-90s there, she let's says, hear it. who moves to the right and who moves to the left, she said. Ah. <laughs> oh. Clever. <laughs> Kawasumi comes off. Shift is over. 20 minutes remaining at the Orion's Ball Stadium in Amstad, Sweden. A corner for... Ayami Ayama, she'll lead this one short, clever stuff. The belt in, trouble for the United States right into the teeth of that defense. It's a good hit from Utsugi, and the counterattack is on, and here comes the U.S. of A. Stretching those legs is Heather O'Reilly. She's got Carly Lloyd arriving in support through the middle, and it comes its forward now, twisting and turning. What can the U.S. conjure up? A little space in. Well, it was O'Reilly calling her own number in the end. You have to keep the goalkeeper honest. You know, it's not always going to be a pass from Heather O'Reilly. Here we are. We see, again, Sakaguchi with a great hit. Just nailing that crossbar going. So, so close. <laughs> Scoreline really doesn't tell the whole story. Japan have had some good moments. It's they, getting better for the U.S. They as have, well. but I think it, it also maybe doesn't tell the story of the U.S. I think they've played better than the three goals that they've gotten. They, they've had some great chances that didn't go in. And I think this, once again, seeing how dangerous their front two can be together and that the counterattack is really something that they will use against you if you fall asleep. We'll see. Or turn the ball over in transition in the midfield. Possession paramount. More so for the Japanese, such a big part of their game. Mitz with the throw for the U.S. And Sugi has really sprung the line for the Japanese. Clears away, but Box gets it back. This is Carly Lloyd on her 134th appearance for the United States. Good football here and good running from Lloyd. Ando just shepherds it over the byline. And some debate is whether it's going to be a goal kick or a corner. I think the Japanese are going to win that argument. <laughs> and there oh, it is, there we go. the there old magnet is. board. <laughs> I love that magnet board. I still haven't figured that one out. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Did you? <laughs> Come on. That's what you're here for. <laughs> and it just goes through and skips into the hands of Kaori. A little more patience there for the U.S. I know they're eager to score goals because when you score three goals, you think you want another one and you want another one. Sometimes getting, you know, going north-south, you have to go east-west too. So you can't just be direct all the time. A little mixing it up would do well. Ando has done very well here. Early ball played across and the United States defense was not fooled. No, they weren't, they weren't fooled, but it is a ball that causes problem. It gets in behind the defense. It forces them to face their own goal, and Hope Solo cannot come out and get it. What they need there is a player who's going to see that early from Japan and make an early run behind the defense so that they can get on the end of it, as Abby Wambach did in the first half. Kumagai, Sugi, going the direct route. This is better from Japan, and it's Miyama! Oh. What a save from Hope Solo. Great efforts from both players. Well, you see here again on this replay, great technical strike again. She gets off of that that kicking leg and on <laughs> and puts that ball on goal, forces Hope Solo to parry it wide for a corner kick. But Japan does a good job of playing the ball in. It gets knocked down. They have someone coming underneath. All right, let's see what Miyama has up her sleeve. What? Straight into the mixer and Abi Wambach defending very well. That's a great dimension to have. Your forward is so big, able to win those balls in the air. 
fortifying the U.S. defense. Miyama looking to go right back to work, and it pops out here for Nagasoto, the Japanese goal scorer today. Everybody back behind it for the blue and white. <laughs> Utsugi got a little lucky on that one. She kind of overran the play, but Amy Rodriguez being aggressive. Not a bad foul to give up, not a great foul, but a little bit more control in that situation. Japan have had a lot of free kicks. I'm sure that's something that Pia Sundhaga will address. Remember, there's one more friendly coming up for the U.S. It's on June 30th. They'll get set, of course, to take on their CONCACAF rivals, Canada, just outside of Salt Lake City in Sandy, Utah, at the beautiful Rio Tinto Stadium. If you're in the area, stop on by. It's support the U.S. women's national team. And that game will present a different problem than Japan is presenting for the U.S. in this game. And I think also it will be interesting to see Canada. They have a new coach in John Herdman who came over from New Zealand. Lots of experience coaching international football. I think he's got a great vision for Canada. I think he, over these last months, I've, Christine Sinclair happens to be a neighbor of mine, so I see her at the coffee shop every now and again. <laughs> and I know that the players really like and respect him, and that should be a good match. I'd love to hear some of those conversations. <laughs> and they see the more painful sides of women's soccer. Utsugi going down under the challenge. And who else, Carly Lloyd? We saw her get stuck into the Swedish midfield, doing it once again. There's going to be a sub, Megumi Takasi. We're getting set to come on. Might be a familiar name, folks, because she was the one who dealt the United States defeat on the 84th minute, heading in the corner kick from Miyama on March 5th in the Algarve Cup. First time the United States in that match failed to score in over four years. And some concern here oh. is Lloyd takes a good piece of Utsugi with her. Yeah, that you'll feel tomorrow. And, you know, un unfortunately for Utsugi, that's, uh, you know, coming at the end of the game, and you, you hope that that doesn't happen, and hopefully we see her at least sitting up, and, you know, nothing like an ankle sprain in the afternoon. That goal in the Algarve Cup was Japan's only shot of the second half. Strange, they certainly were efficient, so Utsugi will come off here some concern and United States will wait for Japan to sort this one out a little over 12 minutes remaining here London 2012 just around the corner I cannot wait opening ceremonies coming up July 27th the US of course starting their Olympic campaign before two days before the opening ceremonies here we see the tackle again Carly Lloyd comes over. Ooh. That, that actually, I don't want to speculate about what that might be, besides not being very comfortable. <laughs> Speaking from experience, right. correct? Right. But she's smiling while she's laying down there, so at least you have to see that she's not in a devastated place. Another sub. A la Abby Wambach. Yeah. Another sub for the Japanese. There you get a look at Christine Rampone, the U.S. captain. She'll take the free kick here. And right up the guts. That is just not, it's not good enough. Chrissy Ram, for Chrissy Rampone, for the U.S. national team, it's just not good enough to play a straight ball from the middle of the, of the park right to the top of the box. It just makes no sense. You have all that time in waiting for Utsugi to get off the field. There's a gift for Carly Lloyd, but she's got it all to do. Support on the right. It's Carly Lloyd for the United States. Just misfiring, but Japan a little sloppy once again. A little sloppy, but Carly Lloyd does a great job of shutting down Takase, I believe. She takes a few touches. She sets up and lines herself up for a shot. Good awareness. She gets into the box. Hey, she knows a thing or two about scoring against oh. the Japanese. She had that goal in the group stages in Beijing. 1-0 against Japan. Well, she also scored a brilliant goal against Brazil in the Olympics, which I think was devastating to Brazil and life-altering for Carly Lloyd. And here they come once again, looking for more, twisting and turning on the far side. Amy Rodriguez, she'll need some help. They close well here. O'Reilly off the left foot. To, boy, it was Abby Wombach. She was right there at the near post, but you've got to praise Yakari Kinga, the Japanese defender, to get in front. 
Well, she does a good job of marking Abby Wambach, but I will also say I'll give praise to Amy Rodriguez, not just trying to go to goal and just to get some kind of shot off. Here we see Sydney LaRue, another <laughs> oh, formidable goal scorer, and she's just a threat like the others that have come in. Yeah, if Alex Morgan is the greyhound of sorts, the pace, she is Quicksilver, the Canadian-born United States striker now, of course, making her 13th appearance. It was a sub, of course, against Sweden on Saturday. First the corner coming up, a rare one for the U.S. Off the head of Carly Lloyd. Better stuff from the U.S., but she just couldn't keep it down. She could not keep it down. That's a tough ball to win, too. Heather O'Reilly plays it. It's kind of bending away from the goal. and I love Lauren Chaney when she plays a corner because she drives it in there. It doesn't have spin. It kind of gives the, the attacking player a chance to hit it square on the ball. Now oh, here's LaRue. UCLA Bruin. Touch back for Tobin Heath, who's drifted to the near side. Wambach with a good flick. And Miyama has to drop all the way back into defense. The United States, as they say, looking to finish with a flourish. We have to now look at the lineup. Is it a 3-5-2? Is it a 3-4-3? Three, three? I think that's more so what it is. Three in the back. And you have Sydney LaRue, Amy Rodriguez up front. And all the horse. Abby Wambach. Uh, that's, that's danger right there. The floodgates could open. It's reminiscent of when the U.S. national team had Michelle Akers, April Heinrichs, and Karen jennings Gabera up front. It's like, who do you mark and how do you keep them away from the goal? And then add Mia Hamm as a wide player on the right and Christine Lilly as a wide player on the left. What do you do? You wave a towel. Yeah. And it's usually and white. Sometimes you just hope for the best. So we'll see the switch for Japan. Asuna Tanaka. Two goals in the Olympic qualification run in Asia. She'll replace Kyoko Yano. Midfielder for midfielder. We'll see how it slots. The Japan trying to find the right recipe as well in their lead up to the Olympics. Our side for O'Reilly. All right, it's a creative little dribble. She lifts it up over the defender to run onto. Use her strength of, you know, she has a big motor, Heather O'Reilly. She is tireless. Yeah, she scored in the semifinal victory in Beijing. 4-2 against Japan. Mitts on the throw. Wambach, good knock forward here. It sits up O'Reilly. Oh, just couldn't wrap her <laughs> foot around it. It was there for the taking. It, it was. It, I, I don't think she waited long enough for that ball to come up off that half volley. But I think what's more important about that scenario is that it was a good throw in to a flick to a runner. Some continuity, which is what you hope for at this stage. Certainly had a uh, training ground and practice yes. session look to it. <laughs> Nagasato, she's just irritating Hope Solo right now. She's <laughs> held the ball for like 20 seconds. Ref, what are you going to do? Do something. It's uh, the referee has had enough. <laughs> but Nagasato didn't do anything. She She's standing 10 yards away or ish from Hope Solo. Hope Solo has to play the ball. Yeah, what's she doing? What's the call? Let's see. Referee Lynn Anderson. Hey, bro, behind yeah, just outside of uh, Gothenburg. So our coverage continues on Universal Sports. Interesting decision. Yeah, interesting. Swedish-based referee. She was calling soccer. I don't know what that foul is called, but <laughs> it's called nothing. Gothenburg, I think one of my first international tournaments as a young player with my state team. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, good old days. Bringing them back. Good turn from Carly Lloyd. Really put herself about very well. Nuisance for this Japanese midfield. Saar bring an element of brawn, real physical presence to the U.S. midfield against Sweden. That's the same today. Five, a little over five minutes to go here. U.S. perhaps will be a little sad to be leaving Sweden. I know they've been enjoying their time in well, Gothenburg sure, as well as Hamstad. I'm sure they'll be sad to be leaving with two wins. Come on. <laughs> um, no. The oh, great flick. LaRue is waiting. She's going to need some help, however. Heath. Going to play the role of provider working on Ando. Tobin Heath for the United States trying to let one rip in a good block from Kinga. Mitz. 
smart ball wide. Heather O'Reilly, live wire in her own right, and she's not at all shy about taking on defenders. No, she, that's, her, that's her tendency, and that's what she's good at. Mitz lofts one up, it drops. Sydney LaRue straight into the goalkeeper. I think that was actually Carly Lloyd on that, on that strike. They wear the same bright orange shoes. Easy to mix them up. But what I was going to say about the defenders for Japan, when Heather O'Reilly gets the ball, you cannot let her outside because that's where she likes to live and make crosses from. So they did a good job to shut her down. Carly Lloyd uh, opening up a shooting gallery here. <laughs> Here's Sydney LaRue. The up and coming young stars. Wall pass. Oh, hey, nice wall pass off the unexpected Tobin Heath. Here comes the 22 year old LaRue, and the defense did well to come across to put out that fire. They're in some peril. U.S. have really come out here with these attacking substitution with all guns ablaze. It's a burst to the middle from Lloyd, the dummy from Wambach trying to let it run. Uh, the hardest thing about what's happening in this game, I, I think, for the U.S. is that you have players that don't get to play all that much, so they want to show what they, what they have. But then you start thinking about this is the last five minutes of a game against the World Cup champion. And you have to start thinking about tactics, like what would you do at the end of a game if you were, in fact, up and you don't want to lose the lead, a la USA Japan. So, you know, it's a, it's a tough balance because you don't want to take away from Sidney LaRue or Amy Rodriguez. You know, you, you want to give them a chance to, to do what they do, but you also have to imply some tactics as, as far as I'm concerned. Goal scorer Nagasoto, did it go over the byline? It was a late whistle, but the U.S. will have the goal kick. It's a very good point you bring up here. Match management. How do you control the game? The U.S. didn't do the greatest of jobs, in all honesty, in Frankfurt at the World Cup final. They were twice up a goal to nil and let Jap Japan right back into it. Of course, that famous strike from Sawa on the 117th minute and putting it into penalties. Japan, we know the story. Eventually, World Cup champions winning 3-1 in the penalty kick shootout. And it's not, it, you know, tactics, you talk about tactics. You know, we saw the magnet board there with Norio Sasaki on the sideline. Here we get a good look at this battle. Good job by Abby to hold her ground to force a foul. But talking's not enough. You actually have to put it into practice in a real game situation because otherwise it's just talk and actions speak louder than words. Good choice here. U.S. putting everyone in the box, lump it forward and trying to hope for that header, that second ball down. Box gets ahead to it, but it just goes out of play. Thank goodness for playing it wide and playing it in as opposed to the straight ball. Straight ball, otherwise known as the route one or direct <laughs> approach. Yeah. Lump it up and over the top, a la England sometimes. Uh, here, Japan. Yeah, there you go. Nearly caught in possession. Again, you can't. You you love to see their confidence that they want to play the ball out of the back on the ground. And Lloyd just gets a piece of Ando. But I'm not even the coach, and I have my heart in my throat when I see that. <laughs> just like oh. it does. It asks the questions. And Japan able to dodge another bullet. They'll get the free kick. There's a lot of Brazilian. Uh, influence in Japan. When I went to play there, they they have the same tendencies. A lot of Brazilian players playing there, influencing their young players in Japan, playing in their J League. Interesting how certain cultures influence others. The United States a little bit more of a European approach, you'd have to say. Well, I'd say you know if you ask Tony DeChico, the ex-national team coach of the national team, he used to say you know we were like the mutt. We would take in everybody's style yeah. and what was good, and we would try to make it our own. Reflection of the culture. So many influences in the United States. The free kick, and it's knocked forward. Good win by Becky Sauerbrunn there. Not allowing the Japanese player to flick that ball on. That was very dangerous. So the United States here in the final minute, plus added on time. They will pull up stakes from Sweden and head back home. Looking ahead to June 30th against Canada.
One last oh. tune-up, and oh my goodness, what a challenge from Sydney LaRue trying to win it back and only finding the feet of Asuna Tanaka. Well, thankfully she got up quickly, but that could leave an impression. <laughs> yes, four <laughs> minutes. It'll be added on here. The Orient's Val, Ando, and the run. Four minutes. Tanaka. Perhaps some tired legs out there. Remember the second game in three days? Actually, I think the U.S. looks fresher than Japan does, and Japan has not played a game, so that speaks highly of the physical fitness of the U.S. team, which really is never a question. They spend so much time spending, uh, you know, getting physically fit in the weight room, uh, extra running on the training ground. That's never a question. But can they put their fitness to use is really what I think the application that needs to happen for the U.S. in the big games. And it really has never been a question about the United States' athleticism as well. And they put it together in 90 minutes of sound football. And after what appears to be two back-to-back 3-1 -back victories in Sweden, things boding well, but still some time remaining. Final ball cut out by Yakari Kinga. This is Ando. Japan with a lot of work to do themselves. They'll regroup on Wednesday to take on the Swedes. Good recovery by Sydney LaRue in the 90th minute. I know she just came on not long ago, but it's easy not to track that run back, but that's good discipline. LaRue, pretty impressive in 2012. Seven goals in her own right. Of course, we all know about those great starts to Olympic qualification. 14-0 over the Dominican Republic. And of course, 13-0 over Guatemala. LaRue scoring five times in that one. I believe in that tournament, Amy Rodriguez. And that one comes in, and Abby Wambach knocks it forward. She grabs the brace, the United States for Japan one. You know, again, Abby just does what Abby does well, which is she finds the holes in the defense in the box. Now, number two is me, has to make a decision for Japan. Kinga, either come and mark Abby Wambach and not allow her to win the ball as she had previously done, or just watch her score a goal. <laughs> Great job by Abby. You know, she's... Poacher. She, she, yeah, she's a poacher, but I don't think she poaches when it's needed. But she does a great job of finishing the proper way. That's a head ball. She doesn't try to do anything fancy. She puts it in the back of the net. Thank you very much. Lloyd to box. The U.S. really hitting their stride. They scored four against China on May 27th. They've done it again here. 11 goals in three games, yeah, not too to, shabby. We talked about, end of, I talked about end of game tactics. Maybe the end of the game tactic is just go and score another goal so we don't have to worry about giving up a, a goal ourselves. Best defense is a good attack. Some believe in that setup. No credit to the cross. Ando. Food for thought for Japan. They want to fine tune in their own right. Again, I don't think this this score for Japan is representative of how well they actually played, and they got some good chances. They did hit the crossbar. Um, you know, they can go away from this game with some positives for sure. Yeah, get a goal and hit the hit the woodwork twice. Very very close, and that one repelled very well. Sarban really is a. Good foil in the center of the park here. Whether it be against Rampone or Bueller, paired with Rampone or Bueller, but that's the final score. The United States doing very, very well today. Double delight for Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach. And all is going according to plan here for the U.S. of A as they wrap up their tour of Sweden with a second consecutive victory in the space of three days. It all started with two goals in the first 10 minutes. Morgan on target, Wambach following it up. Nagasoto grabbed one back. However, the United States getting second half goals from their strikers as well. Final score, Japan one, United States four. Keep it right here on Universal, Universal Sports. We'll be right back with a wrap up after this.
And welcome back to the lead up to London 2012, the United States right on cue. Goals on either side of halftime, and it was the Abby and Alex show. Wambach and Morgan doing the business 4 1. Just a couple of days after that big 3 1 victory against Sweden, we welcome you back to our Universal Sports Studios. Christian Miles alongside Brandy Chastain. I mean, the U.S. looking pretty good right now. 11 goals in their last three games and four consecutive wins. Absolutely. Great, great win today against Japan, who they hadn't beaten in the previous three games, so they have to feel good about that. The glass mm -hmm. is definitely getting more than half full for Pia Sunhaga. I think the most difficult thing for her going forward is deciding who the best 11 are for the U.S. women's national team. All right, we saw some tweaks in midfield here. We saw Carly Lloyd, a lot of substitutions in fat six. What did you make of the changes as the second half went on? Well, what I make of the changes is that there's good players sitting on the bench, mm -hmm. and the U.S. has to decide what style of play they want to have. 4-4-2, wide players getting end line crosses. Do mm -hmm. they want to play flooding the midfield with three in the middle? Those are decisions Pia Sundhagas will have to make. I like when we get Cheney, Box, Lloyd in with Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan. I think that's a deadly combination. All right, we look at the defense and things very interesting. Heather Mitz hitting the bench today. Amy LaPelbit going to right back it. Of course, Kelly O'Hara solidifying things. The United States, they don't get the shutout, but things are looking pretty good for the Stars and Stripes. The Olympics are just around the corner and they're going in to the friendlies on the right foot. Final score today, Japan 1, USA 4. That's going to do it for us on behalf